I've lived in Northampton area for most of my life. I've made Northamptonshire my home and I'm, I think I'm pretty closely identified with Northamptonshire and my art as well. My name is Chris Fiddes. I'm a painter. And more than that, I'm, I'm a Northamptonshire painter. My approach to painting is that what I would really like is if somebody were to look at my paintings or look at a number of them a hundred years from now, they'd be able to form quite a good idea of what it was like to be living in the late 20th and early 21st century. My subject matter almost always comes from what I see on the news or read in the newspapers or observe happening round about me. I think once your paintings cease to be a comment on one's fellow creatures and the times in which one lives and the social events that characterize those times, you're losing out on validity. I'd always wanted to be a landscape then, but because I've always had this ongoing love affair with the countryside. Really, that was all I had ever thought of doing. When I was in the forces, and particularly having seen what I had seen during the Carolyn riots, I realized that this was an art form that though it was delightful to a handful of the fashionable conoscenti, the art-loving public, the gallery-going crowds, to the ordinary people, didn't mean a damn thing. In those days, I, I was completely ignorant of any other artists that had seen the sort of things that I had seen and made pictures of them, despite the fact there had been war artists. I knew not, I didn't have the language, the visual language for it. So for a good year after getting out of the army, I didn't really do any painting at all. because I had no answers to what I had seen. And then one day I had a phone call from a chap I'd been in the army with, a bloke called Noel Parry. He'd clearly been reading Laurie Lee's book as I rode out one midsummer morning, which narrates about the time that Laurie Lee went to Spain at just before the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War. And clearly Noel wanted to do what Laurie Lee had done. But anyway, Noel suggested that, um, why didn't we spend the summer on a trip to Spain? We would have to live very simply and um, travel by the cheapest means possible. But we traveled, we started off in the north of Spain but it was a marvellous time, really. And for the first time in months and months and months, it rained. So to get out of the rain as much as anything else, and because it was free, we went into the Prado. And the Prado, the pictures in the Prado had not received any care and attention for many, many years. Titians that were loose on their stretches. Bits of mildew here and there. You know, they were in a poor way. Great masterpieces, but they were 
recognizably masterpieces. Rubens and Titian by the truckload. Even Bosch and Bruegel. Unbelievable pictures. But eventually we ended up down in the basement. And there were pictures down there by some Spanish chap called Goya. And I was completely unprepared for it. That was, to me, the experience that was to govern the form that the rest of my life was going to take. Going down into the basement room where were housed what were called his black paintings, pictures that he had painted initially as murals in his own house. And I had never seen anything like them before. Suddenly, you see, looking at these pictures, I was able to make sense of the, what I had seen when I had been in Hong Kong. Not just the brutality of the suppression of the riots, but the lives of the impoverished peasants there and the overwhelming squalor of it. The bloody unkindness of it all. Goya could do it, and Goya had done it. Well, I suppose, really, really, that was him telling me the way to go. In most people's lives, there are highs and lows. I think it's the lows that make you as an artist, really. And the lows that leave their mark on you. And if there are no lows in your life, you ain't going to be much of an artist. I think I have experienced most of what a man can know. And I think I have been a damn sight luckier than most. I think I've known great joys, great happiness, great pleasures, as well as knowing profound disappointments. Somehow or other, I don't know, maybe it had even started in those days when I worked in those ghastly, gloomy Dickensian factories. But I had formed the idea that the proper study of mankind is man. And that it was the human situation that is the true drama that really ought to be recorded. 